Hello and welcome. I'm Sanjay Pinto. If those visuals of a renowned Supreme Court advocate and anti-corruption crusader getting beaten up in his own chamber are not shocking enough, wait, there's more. Now as I speak, just check your wallet and see if your debit and credit cards are safe. Did I say safe? Do you know that even if your card is in your possession right now, an identity thief may be withdrawing your hard-earned money using a skimmer device? This is what happened to a senior journalist in Chennai. We know in which ATM the fraudulent transaction took place, but we still don't know who the culprit is. Because can you believe the CCTV wasn't working properly that day? So how safe is your money? What is this evil skimmer device? What can you do to protect your money? To help us with some of those answers, we'll be joined live in our studio by Vinay Arvind, a cyber law expert, by Ashwin Kutnis, Deputy Commissioner of Police, St. Thomas Mount, and of course our crime reporter Salim, who broke that story. But that discussion comes up in about two minutes from now after the headlines with Anu George. Anu? Thank you, Sanjay. Let's take a quick look at the headlines. The Prime Minister writes to Amma, guarantees people's safety, but adds that Tamil Nadu needs power from the Kudan Kulam nuclear plant. Created to monitor climatic condition, ISRO successfully launches its PSLVC-18, an Indo-French tropical weather satellite from Sri Harikota. A suspension of jail terms for the 32 accused in the Vachati riot and rape cases comes from the Madras High Court. Two suicides in Chennai, a lady police constable pulls the trigger and a southern railway officer jumps off his apartment building. Beware, it's as easy as using a card skimmer to clone your debit card and siphon away your account balance. We'll tell you the precautionary measures. We will move on to the national headlines now. Supreme Court lawyer activist Prashant Bhushan was beaten up by two youngsters who are suspected to be from Sri Ram Sena. Salman Khurshid's comment on investment in India being damaged by business kept in jail has been termed as disturbing by the Supreme Court. The Delhi High Court acquits former IPS officer and PMO official R.K. Sharma in journalist Shivani Bhatnagar's murder allows him benefit of doubt. And Shah Rukh Khan tells us the most ridiculous questions he has faced, even one about him being gay and how he answered. Sanjay, uh, do you have something on the ATM skimming for us now? Yes, indeed, Anu. Imagine your money being debited from your bank account without your knowledge, as I said in my introduction. And that too, when you are alone in possession, you alone are in possession of your ATM card. A veteran journalist in Chennai has been running from pillar to post to get his hard-earned money back. The Chennai police say they have been convening meetings and meetings, just like they did with those internet center owners, and we know what happened this last week. This time around with bankers, urging them to install those security gadgets, simple CCTVs. But it seems the advice has fallen on deaf ears. Our, our crime reporter, Salim Rahazmo. This was an SMS that Murari, a senior journalist in Chennai, recently received. Rupees 10,000 has been debited from your account on the 20th of August. Now here's a catch. Murari had neither withdrawn money from any ATM that day, nor did he issue a cheque for that amount to anyone. So he approached his bank, the Central Bank of India, and lodged a complaint. I have taken up with the ombudsman because it is like saying I give a complaint of a burglary of the house and the police comes and says, your uh, Almira has been broken open, so we don't know whether you have taken it or somebody else outside has taken it. It's as I observed that. I'm not happy with that response. I'm going to follow it up with the, um, I've already followed up with the ombudsman and virtually I will even go to consumer court. Investigation revealed that the transaction had taken place in an ICICI bank ATM on Radha Krishnan Salai. Murari says his ATM card was with him when the transaction had taken place. So the most obvious way forward would be to check the CCTV footage in the ATM. That's considered a most basic security feature. But sources say the CCTV camera wasn't in proper working condition. So the thief just got away without a trace. So how could this have happened? Now the victim suspects that the thief may have used a card skimming device, perhaps attached to the petrol pump for this fraud. What is a skimming device? It's a small card reader to steal information on a magnetic strip. The card information is then copied onto a file with the memory of the skimmer. The debit or credit card numbers are then sold or used to create fake cards. Where can this happen? 
at restaurants and stores where people hand over their credit or debit cards for swiping that is not done in their presence. Skimming devices, experts say, can even be planted in ATMs to steal data when a person tries to withdraw money. Burari has stopped short of filing a police complaint, but the cyber crime cell says this is not an isolated case. It's a wake-up call to banks and their customers. With Salim in Chennai, Sanjay Pinto for NDTV Hindu. We've got uh, Vinay Arvind, the cyber law expert in our studio and we've got Ashwin Kutnis, the Deputy Commissioner of Police St. Thomas Mount. Thank you very much Vinay and uh, Ashwin for joining us. Ashwin, to you first. Now, as I said earlier, with regard to those internet centre owners and now again banks, you've been convening several meetings, a slew of meetings with them. Nothing really is being followed. Uh, even if these banks are not vicariously liable in criminal law, is the police now contemplating some sort of action? Because this is the most basic precaution, Ashwin, of putting a CCTV and if the CCTV device is not working in an ATM, how do we then zero in on the culprit in this case? Yeah, but uh, this is not in actually enforceable. What, these are guidelines that we give. We'd like to enhance security and we'd uh, seek cooperation of the, uh, of the uh, public, of the uh, uh, vendors of banks in various issues uh, even at the in theft cases we'd like uh, people to in install CCTVs but again as I said this is not enforceable this is this is a guideline that we give and li we'd like them to uh, uh, install as many CCTV cameras as possible most of the uh, banks have them on their ATMs now in this particular case you said it was not working it's not that the case is not uh, case goes blank because we don't have a CCTV image we can always go back to the transaction that this gentleman has done in uh, previous places, go to those places, find out uh, uh, who would have been involved in the scheming process, then find out if the uh, current against, uh, I mean there is an investigation process, we can always zero in on the uh, criminal in spite of the fact that we do not have a CCTV image, but having a CCTV image would have just altered the case in one go, we would have just had the accused in our hand uh, in a matter of uh, uh, time, that, uh, time span that uh, would just get elongated because we do not have the CCTV image. Absolutely. I mean, you're bang on there because we know also what happened not too long ago in Coimbatore where that murder uh, took place in full public uh, glare and there was a CCTV there which actually captured those visuals. But aren't banks responsible to their uh, customers, accountable to their customers? Is, is there no criminality at all involved in this, Ashwin? Uh, Ashwin, the fact that uh, they have not installed the most basic uh, precautionary measure? Uh, from uh, criminality point of view, from uh uh, from the police point of view, there is actually no uh, criminal uh, uh, misconduct on the, uh, of the, on the part of the bank. But of course, if there is an ABI uh, guideline or something which is enforceable, then uh, uh, the bank can be held responsible for that fact. But uh, you know, in many of the cases, uh, what you were saying, normally this does not happen, happen in the cases of debit cards. Debit cards, what happens is people have written their number, uh, the password on the card itself. So once the card gets stolen, uh, the thief is able to go and enter the bank. Uh, punch in the number and uh, just take the money out for a bank from a bank's point of view you might as well be serving your uh, sending your servant or your your person uh, somebody working for you to withdraw that money how does the bank say that uh, how does the bank know that this is not a, a genuine transaction so bank says that if you somebody's got password somebody's got uh, the card it is a genuine transaction how you've lost it is now another uh, matter who uh, the criminality is on the part of somebody who skimmed the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the bank uh, debit card or credit card or whatever. All right, fair enough. Uh, Vinay, I mean, as a lawyer here in this case, yes, there is no vicarious liability. The penal code doesn't contemplate vicarious liability for. But to an average viewer who is watching this bulletin, there are people who will, uh, you know, constantly update pictures on their Facebook account. Spend hours doing that. But why is that we are so careless that we can't? insist or why can't banks insist in, in, in the interest of uh, the customer's money that all cards, all ATM cards should have or credit cards or debit cards should have the customer's picture on that. This is an ATM okay which has happened but I am saying even if somebody used to steal your card ATM or, or, or you know your debit or credit card and go to let's say a shopping mall, the, at least there the merchant can look at the, can compare uh, you know the, the photograph there with the person who is producing it. 
Absolutely, Sanjay. I mean, uh, having the picture on the card would definitely be uh, one significant step that the banks can take to, you know, enhance the the security uh, in the card transactions and you know minimize the possibility of fraud. But the the problem is that the the dimensions of fraud have now expanded so much that uh, you know the photograph alone wouldn't address you know a, a case like Mr. Murari, for instance. Not just that. In fact, when you go to a merchant today in any of the, even the big shopping uh, malls. You are supposed to have your signature behind on that uh, panel there. Yeah. Very few people have the signature. The signature is there for a purpose because they want the, the, the merchant should actually retain the card, see whether you are signing it properly Absolutely. without any, and then return it. Today, after they swipe it, they give it to you, and then later you sign it. This is what a friend of mine in the credit card industry was telling me. Now, now without taking names, he's like, you know, you want the best protection for your credit card transactions. Always sign wrong. Hmm. Always sign wrong. So then what if you, if you sign wrong and then the, the, the guy who's at the counter says this is not your signature? No, no, nobody checks. Fact is that nobody checks. Nobody checks even on that transaction yeah, slip. Nobody checks on, on, the, on the transaction mm. slip. So if you sign wrong, there's always, but I mean, that, 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 that's not helping our situation right now. Mm. I think, uh, I mean, uh, what, uh, what Ashwin is saying was that there is, there is no criminality and, and, and if there is an RBI regulation or something on those lines, that It's would a deficiency in service. You can take them at least to the consumer court. See, the, the fact is that who, whose who service is deficient? The question is that you are a, you're a central bank customer. He's okay. gone to a different bank. He's gone to a different bank's ATM. Mm. So but in an age uh, where you have portability, uh, portability is, you know, with mobile phones, insurance policies, you are entitled, the, the bank, uh, that particular concerned bank where the ATM uh, money was withdrawn, would levy a charge for that. So you become a customer automatically by default. No, but now there is also the, the, the arrangement that you can have free transactions and so on. So, the first defense that the, the ATM bank would take is, free, is that you can't be a customer. I'm not a service provider. I'm and you're not, not a customer if it's free. Yeah, I'm not a customer if it's free. Exactly. Yeah, but then, but then the, this matter was settled by the courts where they even said in government hospitals, although it's supposed to be free, if as long as there are patients who pay, then yeah. of course uh, you make a big way. But then this is legal hair splitting. <laughs> Let me go back to, to Ashwin. Uh, Ashwin, again, the fact is that, I mean, skimming devices. For a, for a, for it, it tends to sort of even details, even the mention of the word skimmer will tend to befuddle a normal average viewer and a customer. Uh, there are places where you go to an ATM machine and they, there's a little uh, sort of a, a plastic sheet that is put inserted into that place where you insert your card. And that gets an imprint of the, the magnetic script, uh, the, the strip there. Also, there are people who put a plastic uh, sort of uh, sheet over the place where you punch in your password. And uh, you'll find a guy waiting outside. How will the po how can the police really come in here? A to create awareness and B to ensure that banks ensure that basic security apparatus there, like you have only a card enabled entry. Usually the the security guards outside the, the bank are sleeping or they are busy doing other things. They are in petrol pumps. They are watching and having chats with other people. How can the police really come in? Because ultimately this is a cyber crime. Uh, first of all, uh, to what Arvind was saying, this. Uh, this definitely is a deficiency in service because the in all the ATM generally they are farmed out to some agency, private agency to run. They are filling in the cash and they are maintaining the CCTV. So whichever agency is doing that process for this particular ATM can be held up for deficiency service. Deficient service is because the uh, uh, another bank has contracted it out to run that service, and the uh, the uh, the customer is a bank uh, uh, customer. So it automatically comes that there is a deficiency of service that is one point. The second point uh, that uh, you said was skimmer devi devices are available for 200. Now, we are finding, uh, fighting against human ingenuity. They can, I mean, you can make it in any fashion. It's just a card read. It's a very small device. You can give it any shape. You can have small cameras placed on uh, the uh, uh, place where you punch your uh, numbers. So, it can be done in thousands of ways. It's really not, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just human ingenuity. You can plan any which way you want. Now, what are what we would like to do is what how you can avoid it is the banks. That is to say, is if they have a guard that uh, the the human factor is ruled out. Anybody coming there and fiddling with the machine is ruled out. Uh, the second thing is having a CCTV camera, not only on the top of the machine but at the ATM center itself. So anybody coming in outside is also recorded. Besides the fact that. Anybody, most of these uh, machines have a camera inbuilt into it, and some of the ATM uh, ATMs have camera installed at the gate also. That is two cameras uh, working in ATM. That gives a foolproof security to our, as far as we are concerned. Ashwin, most of that, the uh, sorry to interrupt, but most of the ATMs today are attached to petrol pumps. So there's a huge volume of traffic that people coming in and going. So somebody entering that place or in the vicinity may come under the garb of filling petrol and then actually uh, be a perpetrator of a of a cyber crime of an identity theft. 
No, I'm talking about ideal case. I'm saying a foolproof security would be if you have guard, you have two cameras. And of course, as I said, you, uh, a guard can be fooled, somebody can talk him out for something, somebody can fiddle with the uh, a, a CCTV camera and in spite of having a CCTV camera, somebody will commit the offence. And what, uh, what this does is, creates barriers to uh, committing com uh, commission of an offence and helps the police in uh, detect, uh, detecting the crime. It is not that just because the CCTV camera is not there or the guard is not there, we are not going to de detect the case. The case can always be detected through other means. But what we are saying is, it is creating barriers to, uh, to commission of an offence and the more barriers the better. We would like, uh, that is why we call the banks, we tell them uh, uh, to install cameras, to have guards. But as I said, what police does is basically give them guidelines, it is not mandatory. Once it is not mandatory, it is up to the uh, banks to uh, take the initiative and it is for the customers to choose whether this bank which I am uh, going to is, uh, is bothered about my safety, bothered about safety of my money. I think if that awareness comes, also uh, things would change. Uh, well, for the benefit of our viewers and customers here, I am just curious to know, uh, Ashwin, when these bank managers or bank representatives come to the various meetings called at the police commissionerate, at the police headquarters, what do they say? I mean, when you give them all these guidelines and explain to them how cyber crime can be kept at bay, what do they do apart from merely nodding their heads like Tanjavur dolls? No, see, I mean, uh, uh, I wouldn't say that uh, they're not they uh, not aware of the facts or they're not they don't want to do it. But they have their own. Uh, they they must write to the headquarters. Sometimes the replies come late. They they want to do it. They write letters. They give us Marcus copies, and then it does not come uh, through from the headquarters because it involves some expenditure which which the bank manager may not be authorized to do. And at some point of time, we need to take it up at a at the higher level and say that this this is a minimum requirement. It must be there. CCTV cameras too, one at the machine, one at the centre is a must. It has to come through at some point of time from uh, the banks or the RBIs. It may come through the uh, uh, pressure of, of the customers also, but it has to come through at some point of time. It is not that they, they do not want to respond or they do not, uh, they say they nod their heads and they go back. But the kind of action that they take is not what uh, is not commensurate with the kind of action you would like. I mean, we call, call uh, 100 managers and maybe 10 are able to do something and 90 are not doing it. But again, as I said, it's not enforceable. All right. Uh, stay with us, Ashwin. Let me bring in Vinay here. Vinay, uh, when you go to a restaurant, most people actually carry very little cash in their wallets, but just a couple of cards, sometimes a slew of cards. Right. And you go to a restaurant and, you, and, and the bill is about 2,000 rupees. So usually it's, it's a done thing to pay with your card. Now, the card is taken away from you. Uh, and it's not within your view and then it's swiped. There are sometimes people who even in, in your presence, they swipe it twice or thrice saying that there's some problem with the machine, which is a risk there. When the card is taken away from you and then brought back, that's also a place where you can possibly have these skimmer devices used in the entire details, copy the magnetic strip and all that. Absolutely. Would you then say that the time has come for people to uh, ration their use of cards, especially for high value transactions or places where the card is taken away from your site? See, it's better to pay by cash instead in some places. See, it's that's easy to say, but uh, convenience will always win out. You know, uh, people will do what's more convenient uh, up until the time they suffer something. That's why they, they don't wear helmets in Chennai. Exactly. I mean, in, anywhere else in the country. I mean, so long as it's convenient and up until they suffer some detriment, uh, people will always prefer to go by the convenience route. I think uh, you can't expect people to sacrifice convenience for for, for security. So what what? the banks and the industry should do is to beef up the technology behind this, these machines, you know, to, to ensure that the instances of fraud can be minimized. Mm. And which is which is in the case of these the CCTV cameras as well. The only only people that the banks are scared of is, is the RBI. Uh, the only no, no, they are scared of journalists and lawyers also. That's why they don't give them loans easily. There. <laughs> but that's a different kind of fear. Yeah. You, you know, the, 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 the overarching fear of, you know, regulation. Mm. The only the only regulator they really fear, they don't fear the police, they fear the Reserve Bank of India. And the RBI, you know, has well, the, sweeping when the power. Banks can, when you borrow money from them, the banks can use strong arm tactics and hire gundas to recover your money. They can't hire proper security people to take care of your money, no, your no, hard earned money. The, see, the, uh, the, uh, the best thing is to eliminate the human, el uh, human element completely. Mm. The RBI should make it incumbent on every bank. No, when you eliminate again, that's a problem. You go to a bank, you have crabbity people sitting at the counter talking about, uh, you know, the, the next neighbor's uh, new puppy at home. And that's why people are fed up with that and they decided let's uh, obviate the human element and then that's when the ATM cards came. Absolutely. You have an ATM card, now either way you're damned. You go to an ATM and now somebody else, Murari sitting in his house, 
found that somebody had uh, withdrawn money from him. So thank God, at least he had an a SMS message which came in. Cameras need to be made mandatory. As in, the, the RBI has to specify that anybody installing an ATM has to install these cameras and, and the, 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 the liability should be on the bank that the cameras are maintained in a working condition. And if, if it comes out that the, the, the camera is not working, the liability for that should automatically, you know, apply to the bank itself. So that, you know, that that will be the prod for them to make sure that the cameras are always installed and working at all times. It's not going to cost them a lot of money. Uh, these machines come with cameras built in. Mm. So upkeep is the only thing that they need to look after. And if the RBI says that this is what they need to do to, to retain their banking license, so on and so forth, they, that's what they'll do. It's, it's a fairly simple thing. Somebody needs to, somebody needs to get around to doing it. You need it. to maybe file a PIL in... Uh, yeah, I know, perhaps. <laughs> Uh, Ashwin, to bring you back in here, I mean, uh, as, as a senior police officer, what are the precautions you would like to give uh, average viewers, customers, ordinary customers watching this particular bulletin? What would you th say to them? Would you say that, for instance, minimize use of your ATM cards or ensure that when you, you have to literally look behind you when you're standing at an uh, inside an ATM, uh, make sure you don't write your PIN on, on the card. Many people do that to, to, to remember the PIN number. What would you advise the, the common uh, customers here? Uh, the kind of offences that are being reported to us now, most of them, are uh, pertaining to one is that when they lose their uh, card, they've already written their number on it. So anybody can just see the number and uh, punch in and uh, withdraw the money. So that uh, they should avoid uh, doing. That they must not do in fact. The second thing is sometimes uh, people come to say that we'll help you out in taking money. Ensure that whenever you're taking out money, nobody else is present in that uh, uh, ATM chamber. Nobody else should be available and do not ask anybody for help. Generally, this happens to old people that uh, people ask them to uh, say, say that we will help you and they sometimes switch cards or uh, uh, they uh, read the numbers at that time. So, that should be avoided. Using the cards in safe places in the sense that uh, uh, just be aware of where you are using the card. In trusted restaurant, trusted establishment, there, there are already uh, checks and uh, checks built into the system where they, the employee whosoever has used the uh, card, whosoever has taken your card is known to the, uh, uh, to the establishment where you are using the card. In some places where this may not be, you, you feel that this may not be the system and uh, it is generally an uh, unsafe place to use the card, do not use the card there. But I would not say, go to the extent of saying minimize the use of card. I think uh, uh, cards are as safe as money, you know, money can be pickpocketed, money can be stolen, can be robbed. It's, a, it's the same thing. I think the risk involved is same. It's a different kind of uh, precaution that you need, to, uh, you need to take. And once that is done, I think it's as safe as uh, cash. Absolutely. In fact, I think uh, one should also agree with Vinay Arvind who said that, you know, convenience wins over safety. In some cases, not just convenience, but also incentives. Because the more you use your card, even if it's your debit card, you get points. And that can be redeemed for gifts later on. So, it's a, it's a, it's a sort of entrapment as far as the poor, hapless customer is concerned. Also, Ashwin, uh, uh, would you also add uh, more measures like, for instance, running your finger through that slit where uh, the slot where the, the card is inserted to ensure that there's no plastic sheath inside also to ensure that over the keyboard, the keypad on that ATM machine that there's nothing, uh, no extra uh, accessory there so that somebody could probably get hold of your uh, your uh, magnetic strip and the other details. Yeah, general awareness about uh, just to see that the machine is not tampered with. Simple things, we know how the machine looks like and if you see something's inserted, something's written, some car, maybe some uh, something stuck over the uh, pad, these kind of things we must be aware of. We must, uh, if we just keep our eyes open, I think, a very small percentage of offences take place in this manner, but of course, once, once you are aware, once the person using the card is aware of uh, these possibilities, we can definitely reduce it uh, by a great uh, margin, these kind of offences. All right. Ashwin, thank you very much. Really appreciate uh, your time here joining us on uh, the big question. Thank you very much for your time and for all those tips that you've given our customers. But uh, stay with us because we'll head into a short break now. When we come back, we'll also speak to our crime reporter Salim and, and we'll continue this discussion with Vinay. Stay tuned.